What's up everybody? Welcome to MTG The Stack. My name is Trigger and I'd like to welcome you today to some spicy EDH slash Commander gameplay content. Normally we have the top town gameplay going on, just our local recording station with the guys, but Maybe you've noticed behind the scenes, especially if you're a patron, but I've been sort of kicking around for a while now to have some fun little toys for us to play with. And today I get to show a little bit of the fruits of those labor. Around a month ago, we got together with another channel called Affinity for Commander, Martin and Alex. And the two of them, me and one of their friends, Total MTG, got together on Spell Table to record some games and be able to give them to you as content. They took one game, I took another game, Total MTG is just a bro, and I I had a lot of fun playing Magic over Spell Table with them. They're really chill, they're, they're really funny, they're really fun to be with. You can find a link to their YouTube channel in the description below as well as their Twitter accounts. I put them where the normal deck lists are because I did, didn't know how to... I, I, I don't know how to ask other people for that. I guess I could have just asked for their deck list. Today you'll be able to watch my video. Next week, Wednesday, you'll be able to watch their video. Originally, we were planning on having a simultaneous release. Nonsense happened. They had, you know, job, work-life balance stuff. I totally get it. I'm constantly trapped in that loop. Which reminds me. As always, if you like the show or anything else we're doing over here on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind taking that extra step, you can always support us over on Patreon at MTG The Stack. Okay, look, today's patron shout out, I, 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 I'm way too strapped for time lately to actually do the fun patron shout outs right now. If you want to be able to buy me out of my full time job, just click the link down below in the description and just Mardu Gain Rise Up. But. I really want to give special attention to Dullsworth, who's been sticking around with us for a few months now, and we might have missed, just sort of skipped over in the big video and the, the end credit scene. And I just, I just, I want you, Dullsworth, to specifically know you're worth it. It's never a dull moment with you. I'm sure you've heard that before, but it's the only thing that like it's in my brain. I might have even said that. Before. Have I said that before? Comment down below any of your thoughts or feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. In today's game, we have Alex from Affinity for Commander rocking his Atraxa Praetor's voice deck. This is his super friends list, which is his response to the first game, so that he can have his turn trying to grind the game to a halt with overwhelming Planeswalker advantage. His opening hand includes a Deathrite Shaman, Tamiyo Field Researcher, Demir Signet, Fey Burrow Elder, Marsh Flats, Forest, and an island. From there, we have Matt from Total MTG rocking his budget Toski Bear of Secrets deck. This is a squirrel tribal token deck, trying to also overwhelm the board with an advantage, just an advantage of cute little one ones. His opening hand includes a Chatter of the Squirrels, a Brood Hatch Nantuku, a Verdant Embrace, a Forest, a Dryad Arbor, a Reliquary Tower, and an Arch of Araska. For our player 3, we have Martin from Affinity for Commander, who is also rocking his Planeswalker deck, Lord Wigrace. But instead of trying to overwhelm the board with Planeswalker advantage, he's trying to overwhelm the board with Landfall advantage, a deck close to this channel's heart. His opening hand includes a Roland Regrowth, a Realms Uncharted, a Mina and Den Wildborn, an Ancient Green Warden, a Forest, a Mountain, and a Terramorphic Expanse. And finally, it's me, your boy, Trigger, rocking his mascot for life, Edgar Barkov, a deck dedicated to running as fast as possible with 1-1 vampire tokens. My opening hand includes a Vicious Conquistador, a Pulse Tractor, a Legion Landing, a Necropotence, Concealed Courtyard, Black Cleave Cliffs, and a Sulfurous Springs. <laughs> I just realized that my opening hand picture, like it's got... My, my, my dice case is uh, a little sad looking egg. And I, <laughs> you can see its face, like, and the picture looks really bizarre. <laughs> it's just like, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Round one Alex is on the play, so he's going to drop a turn one forest, followed by a death right shaman, ending his turn. After that, Matt's going to go, he's going to draw his card, and he's also going to drop a turn one forest followed by a Chatter of the Squirrels, making a 1-1 one, one Squirrel token, ending his turn. And our past turn. I want to see how the Squirrel looks first. This is, this is big. Oh, no. 
What? <laughs> Shit. I love That's it. a fish. That is a fish. Oh, it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. Look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, nope. I see it. I can see it. All vicious. Right, I'll, I'll see vicious. it now. <laughs> vicious. There we vicious. Go. Then, on Martin's first turn, he'll drop a Terramorphic Expanse and crack it in order to also get a turn one forest, ending the turn. Then, Calvin's going to draw for his first turn, drop a Concealed Courtyard, and then he's going to cast Vicious Conquistador, creating a 1-1 Vampire token off Edgar, and then ending his turn. Round 2, Alex is going to untap, draw, drop a basic island, and then he'll activate Deathrite Shaman, exile a Martin's Terramorphic Expanse from the graveyard, in order to tap out in order to cast Faber Elder, ending his turn. Matt is going to untap, draw, drop a basic forest, and then he's going to flashback Chatter of the Squirrel. He'll then throw his previous squirrel at Martin, the only player without a blocker, dealing one damage to him and setting the tone for tonight's game. He'll then end the turn. Martin, in response, is going to untap, draw, drop a basic swamp, and then pass the turn. Calvin will untap, draw, drop a black cleave cliffs, and then he'll enter combat, throwing his token and vicious conquistadors at Martin. The Vicious Conquistador will trigger, making everyone else lose a life, and then the two creatures will deal combat damage, dropping Martin down to 36. Then on his second main phase, Calvin is going to cast a Pulse Tracker, creating another 1-1 token, and then he's going to cast Legion's Landing, which will create another 1-1 token, this one with lifelink. He'll then pass the turn. Round 3, Alex is going to untap, draw, then he's going to drop a Marsh Flats. Then he'll cast Soul Ring, and between cracking the Marsh Flats to find and shock in a Watery Grave, as well as tapping his Elder in order to add a green, black, and white to his mana pool, he's going to cast Tamio, Field Researcher, ticking it up, targeting Calvin's Vicious Conquistador and Pulse Tracker. Then he'll tap the rest of his mana in order to cast Reclamation Sage, entering the battlefield and targeting and destroying Calvin's Legion's Landing. This will end Alex's turn. Matt is going to untap, draw, drop a basic forest, and then he's going to cast Brood Hatch Nantuko, skipping combat and passing the turn, choosing to leave blockers up. Martin's going to untap, draw, drop a basic forest, and then pass the turn. Then Calvin's going to untap, draw, and drop a basic swamp. He'll then move into combat, throwing only his creature tokens at Martin, denying Alex any card draw off the Tamio, dropping Martin down to 33 life. Then on his second main phase, Calvin is going to cast Necropotence which he'll immediately invest 10 life into, setting aside 10 cards, and then moving to his end step. He'll add the cards to his hand, and then he'll discard down to hand side, sending to exile mostly lands, as well as an Anjay Falconrath. Calvin will then end his turn. Round 4, Alex is going to untap, draw, drop a basic swamp, and then he's going to cast Oath of Nisa, revealing a Jace Unraveler of Secrets off the top of his library, adding it to his hand. He'll then tick up, Tamio, targeting his own Reclamation Sage as well as Calvin's Vicious Conquistador, and then he'll move into combat, attacking Calvin with the Reclamation Sage. Calvin won't block, the Sage will deal 2 damage to him, and Alex will draw a card. He'll then move into his second main phase, and he'll tap his Eldor, adding all 4 colors to his mana pool, in order to cast his commander, Atraxa. He'll then tap out the rest of his mana in order to cast that Jace, Unraveler of Secrets ticking it up, scrying, and drawing a card. Then move to his end step, which will trigger Atraxa, proliferating both the Tamio and the Jace, ending his turn. Matt's turn, he's going to untap, draw, drop a Reliquary Tower, and then he's going to cast Arasta of the Endless Web. In response, Martin's going to cast Roiling Regrowth, sacrificing his swamp and searching his library for a basic forest and a basic swamp, and putting them into play tap. Everything resolves, Matt will skip combat, and he'll end the turn. Martin's turn, he's going to untap, draw, drop a basic mountain, and then with the mountain and three other lands, he's going to cast Mina and Den. With his new land drop, he'll drop a Temple of the False God, which should be turned on, and then he's going to pass the turn. Calvin's going to untap, skip his draw, drop a basic swamp, and then he's going to cast Soren Solemn Visitor ticking him up and giving his board plus one plus O oh and lifelink. He'll then move to combat and throw everything at Alex's Tamio, triggering the Vicious Conquistador and Pulse Tracker, draining the board for two life. 
Alex will proceed the block with the Atraxa and his Deathrite Shaman, and he'll block both of Calvin's non-token creatures. This will kill the Conquistador and the Pulse Tracker, as well as the Deathrite Shaman. Alex will gain 4 life from the Atraxa, and then Tamiya will end up taking 6 in total. Alex will also draw a card through Tamiyo because the Vicious Conquistador did deal combat damage. Before Calvin moves to his end step, he's going to pay 4 of his newly gained life into his Necropotence, setting 4 cards aside into exile, and then he'll move to end step, adding those cards to his hand and discarding his hand down to size, pitching only lands into exile. This is going to end Calvin's turn. Round 5, Alex is going to untap, draw, shock in a godless shrine, and then he's going to tick up his Tamiyo, targeting his Atraxa and his Reclamation Sage. He'll then move into combat and throw both of those creatures at Calvin Soren, killing the Soren and drawing two cards through the Tamiyo. He'll then move into his second main phase where he'll tick down his Jace, targeting his Reclamation Sage and bouncing it to his own hand. He'll then recast it, and when Reclamation Sage enters the battlefield, it's going to destroy Calvin's Necropotence, but not before Calvin invests one final bit of 6 life into the Necropotence, setting aside into exile 6 cards face down, which he won't see until the end of this round. After that, Alex is going to tap out most of the rest of his mana in order to cast Elspeth, Sun's Champion, which he'll tick up in order to create 3 1 1 soldier tokens. He'll then move to his end step, and Atraxa will proliferate, adding another counter to all of his planeswalkers. He'll then end the turn. Matt's going to untap, draw, drop a basic forest, and then he's going to cast his commander, Toski, Bearer of Secrets. He'll move to his end step, but before he can pass the turn, Martin is going to cast Realms Uncharted, which is going to trigger Arasta and give Matt a 1-2 spider. By the end of the Realms Uncharted, Matt is going to give Martin a Field of the Dead and an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth and throw to the graveyard a Duskmoor Salvage and a Cabal Coffers. This is going to end Matt's turn. Martin is going to untap, draw, drop an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, and then he's going to tap the Urborg in order to cast a Soul Rain, before tapping 5 mana in order to cast his commander, Lord Wingrace. He'll tick up the Wingrace, discard a forest in order to draw 2 cards, and then for his second land drop, he'll drop a Forgotten Cave, before ending the turn. From there, Calvin will untap, actually draw because there's no Necropotence, and then he'll drop an unclaimed territory, naming Vampire. He'll then cast a Boros Signet, followed by an Adanto Vanguard and a Blood Artist, both times triggering Edgar Markov and creating 1-1 Vampire tokens. He'll then move to his end step, which will let him grab those final cards from his Necropotence, adding them to his hand, but then he'll have to discard down to hand size, though this time pitching to his graveyard. He'll pitch a Plains, a Drowness Emissary, and an Indulging Patrician. He'll then end the turn. Round 6, Alex is going to untap, draw, drop a basic island, and then he's going to tick up his Tamiyo, targeting his Atraxa and Matt's Toski, and then he'll move into combat, attacking Matt with his Atraxa, dealing 4 commander damage and gaining 4 life, and drawing a card off the Tamiyo. From there, in his second main phase, he's going to cast Solemn Simulacrum, which will enter the battlefield and find him a basic planes. After that, he'll tick up his Jace, scrying one, drawing a card, and then he's going to cast Chalet, Voice of Plenty, which is going to give all of his creatures, all his planeswalkers, and him Hexproof. He'll then tick up his Elspeth, creating some more soldier creature tokens, and then he'll move to his end step, which will trigger Atraxa and proliferate all of his planeswalkers. But he'll also proliferate the Lord Ring Grace, just to be a little nice. He'll then pass the turn. From there, Matt is going to untap, draw, drop an Arch of Araska, and then he's going to cast a Verdant Embrace, enchanting his Toski. He'll then have to move into combat, and he'll throw the Toski at Martin, dealing 4 commander damage, drawing a card off the Toski himself, and giving Alex a card draw off the Tamiyo. He'll then cast an Arbor Elf, and pass the turn. From there, Martin's going to untap, draw, tap 6 mana, and he's going to cast Ancient Green Warden which is going to let him play lands from the graveyard, as well as double all his land triggers, including Field of the Dead, which he plays next. Field of the Dead sees enough unique lands, and it's going to create two zombies. Then from the Green Warden, he's going to play a Cabal Coffers from the graveyard, triggering Field of the Dead and making two zombies. And then he's going to tick down his Lord Wingrace, getting a Forest and a Swamp, triggering Field of the Dead and triggering Field of the Dead, getting two zombies and two zombies. 
Now with a board state to match, he's gonna pass the turn. From there, staring down an incredibly cluttered board, Calvin will untap, draw, and just throw it all out. He's gonna drop a basic swamp and cast a changeling outcast, make it a creature token. He'll then cast a Null Priest of Oblivion, unkicked, make it a creature token. And then he's gonna cast Cordial Vampire, make it a creature token. He'll then pass the turn. Round seven, Alex is gonna untap, draw, and then the first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna cash in that Jace Unraveler of Secrets, gaining the emblem where the first spell any of his opponents cast each turn gets countered. The next thing he'll do is he'll tick up the Elspeth, creating three more 1 1 soldiers, and then he'll tick up his Tamio, targeting the Atraxa and the Toski again. He'll move into combat, and this time, we all see in that there is a block roof reach on Matt's side, he'll throw the Atraxa at Calvin, dealing four commander damage, gaining four life, and drawing a card off the Tamio. He'll then move to his second main phase, cast a Demir Signet, and then he'll move to his end step, which will trigger Atraxa and proliferate all of his planeswalkers. Then he'll pass the turn. From there, Matt's gonna untap, draw, he'll drop a Dryad Arbor, and then accidentally use it instead of his Arbor Elf in order to cast a Kamal's Will, which will get countered by the Jace Emblem, and then he'll cast Lur, enchanting his Toski. From there, Matt will enter combat, and he'll throw his Toski at Alex, who has to block with all of his creatures. Matt will choose to deal his combat damage to the Atraxa, Atraxa will also deal combat damage to the Toski, and this is going to draw Alex two cards, gain Alex four life, but Atraxa does die in the process. As we remember that Matt should have four sapling tokens because of the Verdant Embrace, Calvin points out that Atraxa's death triggered Cordial Vampire, giving a plus one plus one counter to his entire board. This also triggers Blood Artist once, which will point the damage at Matt. This will end Matt's turn. Martin's gonna untap, draw, he's gonna cast a Traverse the Olvenwald, which will be countered by the Jace Emblem, and then he's gonna move into combat, throwing all of his zombies at Alex, who will proceed to block all of the zombies with a soldier each. Before combat damage, Alex is gonna activate Chalet, Voice of Plenty, which will make all the soldiers trade with all the zombies, killing all of them. This is gonna trigger Blood Artist and Cordial Vampire, 16 times, which makes Calvin's board in total plus 17 plus 17 bigger and will deal another 16 damage to Matt. From there, Martin is going to activate his Cabal Coffers for a lot of mana, and then he's going to cast Avenger of Zendikar, creating 12 zero one one sapling tokens. He's then going to drop a Jun Panorama, which is going to trigger Landfall, which is going to trigger Landfall. He'll then crack his Jun Panorama for a basic land, which will trigger Landfall twice again. He'll then play Jun Panorama from his graveyard, which will trigger Landfall twice again. And then he'll crack his Jun Panorama, which will trigger Landfall twice again. And then he'll minus his Lord and Grace, getting a land and a Jun Panorama, which will trigger Landfall four times. And then he'll crack the Jun Panorama, which will trigger Landfall two more times. Every landfall trigger will create him a 2-2 zombie and put a plus one plus one counter on all of his sapperlings. This is gonna end Martin's turn. And just to not not even looking at your zombies, do you have 12, 10, 11? 11, yeah. Just making sure. From there, Calvin's gonna untap, draw, he's gonna drop a basic mountain, and he'll cast a lightning bolt just to get it countered by the Jace. And then he's going to tap two in order to cast an Impact Tremors, followed by tapping out the rest of his mana in order to cast Patriarch's Bidding. What, what uh, is that? Uh, each, <laughs> each player can choose a creature type uh, and then reanimate all creatures from their graveyard to the battlefield. So, for example, I'm going to get my all my vampires. All oh, right. Yeah, I'll pick whatever. Yeah, I'll pick Elf. Yep. Right. Uh, I'm going to choose I. <laughs> that's okay. Be, that's be different, don't you? <laughs> Kamal's a animal tree. Does that count? Or no. no. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. We will get uh, indulging patrician, Dragon's emissary, vicious conquistador, and pulse tracker. So we all lose four life, is it? Or? You all lose four life. Cool. Okay. All right. These do not have the big booty. Enter <laughs> combat. So, Calvin. Yep. <laughs> I know you might think about attacking me in some manner or capacity. Yeah? Might even seem like a good idea. 
But I'll allow me to go over some quick maths. Okay, I like math. So, you've got, let, let's just say you've got, how, how big are each of you creatures? Uh, right now, everything is plus 17 bigger that is about to attack. So, like, this is going to be 18. And when this attacks, Jesus. it will be 1920 because of its trigger. Um, and then this right. is only 17. My, my, my main point is I've got five blockers. Yep. And none of your stuff has trampled. You Which means right. you're going to have to attack me with at least with at least eight things. So the art would leave you with only five blockers. You're right. Martin yeah, has a bajillion zombies and a bajillion plants. Martin is a problem. Which means if you are to attack me, you will die to Martin next turn. Well, no, no, hang on, hang on. That's assuming he flat out attacks you with everything. No, 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 no. That's that's assuming Calvin attacked me with only what is required to kill me. I don't think that does result in him dying, Alex. Like, he can attack you with not a lot and still kill you. No, one. He, has to, he has to attack me with at least eight creatures. Right, so he does that in tokens alone almost, yeah? Tokens alone yeah, which then two. leaves nine blockers, which you have in plants alone. You've got ten plants, so if he blocks with his nine blockers, that's still 12 damage coming at him, not even counting your zombies. Okay, but what's the alternative? He kills me this turn and you kill him next turn. Right? No, the no, the alternative is that <laughs> he doesn't and I wrath the board next turn. But I'm aware that's not a good deal, so I will instead say this. Calvin, in return for this deal, you can attack me with two creatures and kill both my planeswalkers and I shan't block. Okay. So the if I'm deals. hearing this correctly, if I attack you with everything, you're not in a good position. If you attack me with everything, I will just die. But then you will pull. But then you will die to Martin. Oh, Whereas ho, ho, this ho, way. That's what you think. <laughs> All right, go for it. How many blockers do you have again? I love I've got politics. five. I love you the politics. Five. All right. All right. So one, two. So blockers. Technical lethal. Where I come from, I like to put one more in just to be safe. Um, we will put <laughs> blood otters in. So this is coming at you, Alex. Okay? It is indeed. Yeah, that would kill me. See this changeling outcast? It can't be I blocked. Do. This is coming to Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware of that. All right. And then, and then this is the token from the Legion's Landing, right? Oh, it's lifelink. Ah. Oh. These two are coming at Matt. I would like to put sadness on the stack, please. Um, so I'll block two and one with three saplings, yeah? They got, haven't got trample, have they? No trample. No trample. Right, so I just, I'll block with three saplings. Okay, so you block two with three one saplings, one. so you're not going to take yep. any damage, right? No. Uh, so that means three creatures die, two triggers at uh, Matt, and then one at you. We'll play it safe. Uh, these two have lifelink, so I'm going to gain 18 plus 17, which is... Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, three creatures did die, so nonsense okay. is three bigger. And then One, moving two. to my end step, indulging patricians actually going to trigger because I gained three or more lifeless turn, so you'll lose another three. Down to eleven, and then you're fine after that. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, <laughs> you got this. You got this. <laughs> got this. Right. From there, Matt will untap, draw. He'll drop a Garuk Unleashed, which he will tick up in order to give his Toski plus three plus three and trample. But that's all he's got. He'll move into combat, throw his Toski at Calvin. Calvin blocks with all his creatures. The Indulging Patrician dies, but triggers still happen. And then it's Calvin's turn. And past turn. And dead. Are you ready for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And just, tap. just just loading the shotgun shells. Yeah. Bite down on that curb, man. Every everything <laughs> at you. There we go. And that um, is exactly one dead. Fog. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> that would be I would have liked that. Oh dear, <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, dear. Well, that was certainly a sight to behold. <laughs> oh. So, let's talk about it. Now, I know Adrian isn't really a fan of the most impactful, the least impactful format, right? And one of the things I've been trying to brainstorm in order to, you know, appeal to the fools in the comments that have been telling him to stop 
is what if there is a lesson from a particular game? What was the lesson that you saw from watching this EDH slash Commander gameplay content? Now, it can be a variety of things. For example, what happens when you bring a budget deck, Toski, to a non-budget pod, Edgar Markov? If I was doing least impactful to most impactful, I would have to pick on Toski for being the least impactful because it wasn't playing cards at least at the same power level as everyone else. And that was by design. Total MTG has a Toski budget deck and it was a lot of fun to watch and I could see where it was going, but you know, overwhelming board presence and mono green squirrel deck, I, I felt bad, but I let them know ahead of time I had Markov and Walkers. I don't know how bad I should feel. After that, I don't know what lesson I should point out to with the Lord Wingrace deck, right? Because Lord Wingrace didn't also would be the next on the list, didn't really do much until it started doing everything. But then everything didn't matter. It just how much do you account for it made a million zombie tokens and then died? Not to downplay the sheer power of ancient Green Warden. That's a lesson, perhaps, you know, to any Wingrace players out there that is not playing ancient Green Warden inside your Lord Wingrace deck. I'm staring directly into the camera because there's someone in particular I'm talking to right now. After that, Edgar Markov, I would actually put into the second most, like the most impactful, which would have been my first game that like if I had that structure. Cause usually I just put the winner at the top, right? Because they won. But having played that game, I could argue that the Edgar Markov player wasn't the one driving the tempo. I, I snuck in a cordial vampire, right? But. I, I was the beatdown in the beginning, and then the Planeswalker deck generated a massive board state advantage with a lifelink blocker. I shouldn't have won that game, straight up. It, I, I did what I was there to do, stir the pot and beat one person to death, but I, Necropotence maybe bought me more than I deserved. But besides that, like, cut on J Falcon Rat. That's the lesson for your Markov players, but no. What, what is the lesson that we can take away from this particular EDH slash Commander gameplay video? Well, Elspeth Sun's Champion. Elspeth Sun's Champion is a card that's really close to my heart. I played a lot of Standard back in the day, and Elspeth came out before I ever built a Commander deck. In fact, my first Commander decks were built with the idea in mind that I wanted to play cards like Elspeth Sun's Champion. I have a foil still from my standard legal deck from back in the day that I have in my Planeswalker deck that I cherish and I love. I have sold a lot of magic cards in the day, and I have, my collection has gone down to a hundred card pile. Elspeth survives. Truthfully though, I, I acknowledge that she's kind of a weak Planeswalker, at least in Commander. Six mana to make three one ones isn't that impactful when you're trying to break parity against three other opponents. However, it's that ultimate, and in particular, the ability to protect your other walkers at the same time, that really drives her home. And the lesson that I really want to point out to is if you commit to playing Elspeth in your Planeswalker deck, and I think it was a, it's a very good pick for your creature-centric Planeswalker deck, like what I saw Alex perform, you should value that ultimate. Like, if Alex ultimate the Elspeth the turn before, one, the Elspeth would have survived because the track is broken, and two, he could have thrown the creature tokens at either Martin or Calvin, knocking one of the two problem childs out, probably Calvin because he had a blood artist and a cordial vampire, and that's spooky. If he had ultimated the Elspeth, Atraxa would have been a 6-6 Vigilance lifelinker. She was already doing a lot of work. And like, <sighs> I've been doing a lot of research into Planeswalker decks lately because uh, they're my favorite. And I, I really want to drive this idea home. Your goal is always the ultimates on the big ones. Elspeth Sun's Champion is in my Planeswalker deck as a threat of plus two, plus two, and flying to my whole board. Don't, 
don't try and mid-range yourself out of a victory condition, as it were. Because I think that's what Alex tricked himself into. I think he made mid-range value plays, making more creature tokens to actually profit off a plus two, plus two emblem, as opposed to like cashing her in early. Be wary of that. Remember why you're here. To make permanent effects forever. <laughs> But that's all I have time for today. I, this is like the fifth time I've taken this shot because I don't remember how to do anything anymore. Um, if you like this video, leave a comment down below about the lesson you thought was cool. Be sure to jump over to Affinity for Commander. Uh, see, their, see their gameplay video that they're gonna put out next week, Wednesday. I play my Planeswalker deck. I do not do as hot as Alex did though. Be sure to stay in touch with the channel in case you wanna see any updates on say the play mats or the tokens or maybe some other nonsense going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Peace. Okay, there's another lesson that I could share. Uh, everyone in the stream that talks about how, like, this is super annoying Calvin you need to stop like I don't think about it right but then I'm listening to this gameplay video where my mic is right here and I'm doing this the whole time I hate myself now